in my dialog system preview that we had here, you can see that these uh, little text bits, they have this little typewriter effect on it. And I wanted to do this in the last part of the series, but that video got a little long as it is. So we're going to make a special dedicated video here to this. If you do want to just download the project files and play around with those, link down below in the description for Patreon and YouTube members as always. Now, let's get into how to make a thing like this, where the dialogue shows up one letter at a time instead of everything just being thrown in your face because it actually is remarkably easy we're gonna go in here and uh, go into our widgets last time we made this dialogue box it's nothing too uh, weird or too complex it's just well a box for dialogue but at the moment all that we do is on pre-construct uh we're setting the text directly uh to it and that's just a little bit boring isn't it so what we're going to do instead is we're going to be uh, removing uh, all of this and on event construct we will just set this uh, to being an empty bit of text just to be sure that it's like properly getting rid of any text that might have already been in there or whatever and then we're going to loop over the text that exists in our variable here and add those things one letter at a time and how are we going to do that we're going to do that with a for each loop so with a text, we can uh, make a string out of that, so to string. And this is fine because the text supports multiple languages, but by the time we're running this code, it's already picked a language, so it just being a string is totally fine. When you have a string, you can get a character array from string. And this is just an array of our text with every single entry just being one letter, uh, including like periods and spaces, question marks, everything gets indexed as its own separate thing in here. Now, there is one little issue here, and that is that if we just do a normal for each loop, it's going to run through all this in one frame anyway, uh, because a for each loop will run as fast as it will go, and that's pretty goddamn fast. So we can't very well do that. And adding in like a delay node in here isn't exactly going to work either. So what we need to do is we need to copy over the functionality of the for each loop into its own macro, which incorporates a delay. That might sound very scary, but it's not that bad, really. So you can just double click a for each loop and there you can see, hey, this is how a for each loop works within the engine. It's a macro which has like a lot going on here. Uh, we're not going to rebuild this from scratch. What we can do is we can just copy this over, go back into our dialog box, and add a new macro and we can call this for each with delay you could make this a general macro that you can use engine wide if you wanted to if you do you need to supply in a world context object as well uh, because the delay node works differently and stuff like that it's kind of a pain in the ass so we're not going to do that and we can just paste everything in here there we go uh, now we just need to set up the input and outputs connect up a few things that got disconnected uh, from those inputs and outputs. So we can just go through one at a time. The inputs has an exact pin and a wildcard array. So we select the inputs and we add those. We add two things. This will be the input, which will be of type execution. And then we'll add an array, which will be of type wildcard. A wildcard is just a variable pin that can accept anything into it. And that's going to be an array, of course. So we hook up the input here to this first assign node, much like it does here. And then we just look up uh, this array gets put into the length here and into the getting node. That makes sense. Both of those are array related nodes. And then let's look at the output that has a loop body, an array element, an array index, and a completed pin. So let's add those in. We have the loop body which is going to be an execution pin. And then we had, I think the next one is the array element, right? So this will be the array element, which will be a wildcard, a singular one instead of an array. Then we have the array index, which will be an integer. So we'll just call this index. Now we need to call it array index. It's a little bit overboard. And then we have a execution pin again, which is be completed which is again an execution pin. So let's hook all those up in the same way. We can just kind of look at how they did it here. Uh, the loop body comes from the sequence node. The array element comes from the getting node. The index comes from all the way here, the local integer array index. That actually makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And then the completed comes from, I believe, the branch here with false. Yes. So we can connect that up just like that. And now we have reconstructed our for each loop uh, in here. 
but that doesn't really do anything yet. So what we're going to do is every time we increment the loop counter, what it does is it first does uh, the loop body, and then it increments the loop counter, and then it goes back into this branch, checks if it should loop again, and so on and so forth. Every time we do that, we're going to add in a delay. And that delay, we can just pull over into the inputs here, and that will be one of the inputs here. So this will be the delay inputs. And now that we have that, we, uh, instead of doing a for each loop, we can do a for each with delay, the macro that we just made. And now we have a for each loop that functions exactly the same way, but has a delay input. So we can set that to 0.1. And then on event construct, we set the text to clear first, then we input, and then the loop body. It's actually really easy because we're going to be setting the text. And we're going to be setting the text to what the text already is. So get text. And uh, we want to make that a to string real quick because when we have it as a string, we can append to that string so we can have new stuff added to it. And everything that we're going to have to add is going to be our array element. And that's then going to be set to the new value of our input here. So we can hook that up to the loop body and that's kind of everything there is to it. This is how easily you can make a typewriter effect. So now if we open this up, we can see it has a typewriter effect. Now there is a little bit of a nuance to this. You can set this up in one of two different ways. Either you can give in the delay between every single letter, or maybe you would rather be able to set how long it should take from beginning to end in seconds. This is the easiest because the delay input itself already is just like a parameter that we can put in here. So if you want this to be faster, we just set it to a faster number and then it will type faster. If we want it to be slower, we set it to a bigger number and then it'll type slower. But what do we want to say? Whatever the length of the text, I don't care. I want it to be drawn in a certain period of time. So let's say I always want it to take two seconds. That requires a little bit of extra math, but not actually that much, surprisingly. What we're going to do is we want to add a variable here and that will be, uh, we'll call that type uh, duration or something like that. And that'll be a float. We'll set that as instance editable. And maybe also want to expose this on spawn if this is the way that you want to go. So let's do that for now. And we'll get our type duration and divide that by the length of the string array. This has two seconds and we have 100 characters in there. That's going to make this 1 200th. And that's going to go into the delay input. And that's everything it takes to do that. So now if we uh, go into my third person character, we're adding this dialog box. I need to refresh the nodes. We have the type duration. I can set this to take two seconds. And now it will take two entire seconds for it to write hello world. But I can also say, actually, I want it to take five seconds. And now it's going to be taking five seconds to type out hello world in its entirety. Or we can say, actually, I want it to take only half a second. And it will, to nobody's surprise, write out a lot quicker. This is a thing that you can do. Uh, for the most part, I do think it makes a lot more sense to just have this delay input uh, as a value that you can maybe drive through uh, like a game instance thing for like your game settings or whatever. Like if in the game instance, you have your options uh, set. And if you set text speed too fast, this could be uh, set to something like uh, 0.05. If your text speed is set to slow, uh, you can set this to 0.2. That way you have one central place uh, to put it in. And you don't need to supply it every single time when you're adding a new text widget to any dialogue at all, because that will get tiring fairly quickly. So that's the basic idea of setting up a typewriter effects for your text. Uh, it's a little bit of a short side video uh, to the whole series, but I wanted to uh, set this up before we move into the bigger like component-based uh, coding that we're going to be doing uh, moving forward. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 